It's Reality Check with Craig Price. I'm an idiot. Four minutes in and I'm already wrong. I'm like a monkey. Hello, look at me. Craig, shut up. Hey, I need you guys to do these things. (laughs) You're like a beautiful mind. I'm more like Forrest Gump. So, (laughs) Welcome to Reality Check with Craig Price. I am Craig Price. This week, Crystal Washington returns to talk about her new book, The Social Media Why. Thanks for downloading the podcast this week. I'm always excited to have Crystal on the show. She knows her stuff. And today is the debut of her new book, The Social Media Why. It's a great hands-on book that explains the various social networks and why you should or shouldn't use them. And, And we'll get into more detail about the book in the interview. But I also want you to know that if you live in the Houston area, this Sunday, June 19th, between 3 and 5 p.m., At the Microsoft store in the Galleria, 5015 Westheimer Road, Crystal will be signing her book, and you can pre-order via her website, crystalwashington.com slash social media why, no spaces, no underscores, nothing, but crystalwashington.com slash social media why, where you can pre-order it, and when you pick it up at the store between three and five, Crystal will have it waiting for you, signed, sealed, and delivered, though I can't guarantee it's sealed in any way. It's just a poor assumption on my part. And while we're celebrating Crystal's book on today's podcast, we're also ramping up celebrating the 100th episode of the podcast soon. We've only got 10 more episodes to go, and if if you'd like to help celebrate the show, you can call 281-668-8948 and leave a celebratory message. The best ones will be part of the 100th episode, because without you, the listeners, the podcast wouldn't be anything but me yammering to strangers. So I wanted to include you in the milestone, and I really hope you take a minute to call 281-668-8948. And don't forget to head over to iTunes, leave a review, or just click five stars. I'd certainly appreciate it. But enough of this. On to today's guest, Crystal Washington. Today is a very big day for you because today the book comes out. And and how long did it take you to write the book? It actually took me um, four days to write the book, and it took me <laughs> one year to edit the book. <laughs> so. I was going to say, wow, that is um, – I don't know if you want to tell people that because uh, that will crush a lot of dreams. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's so hard to write a book. Well, it's four days, what, no. but it's the editing part. But I actually – I locked myself up in a cabin by the sea. Literally, I did this. And – wouldn't take any phone calls. And for four days, I ate, slept, and breathed writing this book. Surfside Beach, Texas. Yes. I saw it right in the book. Yes. Um, so the book's called Social Media. Well, I'm here with Crystal Washington. I'm sure you recognize the voice. This is her, uh, We're glad to have you back on the podcast. And I'm Thank glad you. that we can actually promote the book, which comes out today on Amazon and bookstores most places. Right. I, I, I say, usually used to say everywhere, but then I also know how I, my own book came out. I know that's not always true. Right. Um, but it's definitely everywhere online. Exactly. Because you only need it to be one place. But um, so four days, but you wrote it. It's a social media. It's called social, the social media. Why? With social media, how is it that you can write a book about something that changes on a daily basis sometimes? Right. I, I just realized my Google Plus changed this morning. And it it irritated me to no end. It's constantly changing. Well, and that was part of the editing process. But also, you know, this book is a little bit different than others because it focuses on the fundamentals and the practical applications. And so it's not so much a step-by-step of do this, do that. It's really showing people in general how to go in and use it for job search, to connect with higher-ups at their companies, to um, attract clients, leveraging keywords. So instead of focusing on the how-tos of the social networks, it focuses more on how you should leverage them strategically. On the why. Right. Which is thus the name. Why should you care? Yeah. I, and th- here's the other thing. is I, I have so many people. I, you know, I talk to a lot of different people from a lot of different industries, and it seems that social media is, is still mind-boggling to lots of people because I have yet to meet a person who is not in social media mm-hmm. Who tells me that it's working for them? Right. I mean, I meet a lot of people, and they constantly go, "No, I, I get nothing out of it. I've been working on it. I get nothing out of it." And then I'll talk to a social media person and go, "Oh, it's everything. It's every. You got to do everything." So, right. So I, I know that's not your approach because you know, but if there's so many people out there not doing it right, mm-hmm. how can it be effective in general? How can someone say this is effective? I think it's more of a anecdotal one a million. It seems like. Well, I think what it is is people approach it from they're not really approaching it from the right angle. So the first thing that I do is I tell people, you have to stop and realize what your goals are. 
before you even decide to look at a social network, you have to know what is it that I'm actually trying to accomplish? Am I trying to get a new job in the next year in a certain industry? Am I trying to increase my website views by 50% over the next three months? Know what your goals are first. Then once you have those goals in place, you can look and see if there are social networks that will help you accomplish those goals. Some will, some won't. Then lastly, you're going to look to see, is your target market on that social network? You can look up their demographics. So when those perfect stars align, then you have a network that you need to look at. But the problem is most people just get on because everyone's telling them, oh, Google Plus is the new thing. Oh, you should be on Twitter. But Vining. Yes, but if you're, if you're trying to connect with C-level execs, it doesn't make sense for you to be on Pinterest. Right. And posting pictures of recipes and, and, and different things. And, and so. all I post is goofy pictures. Right. Um, which is which is cool because, you know, you oh, kinda, you're a humorist. And, and well, not really. I don't <laughs> I, I, it, I don't want my fees to drop. Oh, I'm I don't sorry. tell people I'm a humorist. Oops. I just happen to be funny. I got uh, it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I use Pinterest to uh, it's actually is very good because you can go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. You can post the video. Yes. Through YouTube. Mm -hmm. So all the podcasts are on Pinterest. Just if you're if you're interested, you can know that. Um, but is it? It's, it seems to be that the, they it's building that community and finding the people because sometimes it's hard to find the right people and then try to insert, and then what happens is you awkwardly insert yourself into the community. Well, I think what happens is you find the community and you can do that again by just looking at some basic demographics. A lot of social networks like LinkedIn and Facebook, they have groups. So, I mean, you look for a group that's centered around your topic. And what you do is rather than trying to awkwardly insert yourself where it's, you know, hello, look at me, you start answering questions. Start off by being helpful. And then once you're helpful, people will start to bring you into conversations and mention you. So if you just start off being that fly on the wall, then coming in and saying, you know what, here, I, here's something you might want to consider and not selling yourself but giving resources instead, preferably starting off with resources that aren't connected to you so that people don't see you as cheesy, you'll see that people will embrace you. But it's, it's all how you enter the room. It's just like in person. You know, if you're having a conversation with someone and someone just jumps in and interrupts you and is like, oh, well, I have this going on and you should buy this for me. That's they're a jerk. Every speaker I've met. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> you've been NSA conference. You know I'm how that not works. going to touch that. Oh, that's you're so politically correct. <laughs> and that's another one of the things that I saw that you put in, in the book. You were talking about social media is uh, bridle your inner Joan Rivers. Yes, unless unless you are funny and you're good at it, don't try it. You have to be trained in comedy or just really good at that type of thing. Otherwise, you are going to look like a jerk, and people will not like you. Yeah, because even if you are trained. Yes. Or you have done it before. It, it's an um, the internet is an emotionless thing, and so when you post things, mm -hmm. there you can't hear inflection, you can't hear tone, and so something that may be wildly funny to everybody, and you've said it to oh, I'm gonna post that because everybody laughed at it, uh, it may come off as mean or cruel We've or just that. stupid. We've seen that over and over and over again. Um, I can't think of the movie that was out not too long ago where the comedian, um, I cannot think of his name, but he made the joke about the young girl. She's like nine years old. Oh, yeah, no, that was at the Oscars. That was uh, Seth MacFarlane did there that at the go. Oscars. There we go. And it was like, w what? You know, you, and you can't, especially online, that can't work out too well. No, no, not the Oscars. It was one where someone did that on Twitter, and it, it turned into this horrible thing. Okay, because I, what I know is that he, uh, Seth MacFarlane had a joke about mm -hmm. the nine-year-old mm -hmm. in, uh, I can't remember, her name's like, uh, Quetzalcoatl, which is, I believe, is a Mexican god, but she uh, her, she was so in the Beast of the that. Southern Wild. No, it's just a very difficult name to say. Right. Alan Cerny would be here, and we'd both be mangling it. Right. But he made a joke that was pretty much had nothing to do with her, except she mm -hmm. was nine, and, mm -hmm. it, and it was, actually was one of those, like, I think he called her a name, mm -hmm. like a mean person, mm -hmm. which is ironic because she's such a sweet person. Right. And everybody took it, oh, how dare you do this to my nine-year-old? So some people are going to get really offended immediately, no matter what. Yeah, I think someone called her the C word is what happened oh, on Twitter. Oh, that was that was the follow up. Okay, on Twitter. So on and, and, yeah, and then you, it just went that would nasty. Be a, that would be a hell of an Oscars if he said drop that. And that's why I was saying I knew this didn't happen at <laughs> yeah, the Oscars. You're right. That was a progression. It was a he said it and then someone else I think maybe used the same kind of joke. I think maybe it was the onion. I think it was the, it yes, was the onion. Yes, it was the onion. Yeah. Oh. And and but then again, <laughs> you have to know that the that who's the source. So right. you know, the onion is a website it's a it's been around mm -hmm. for years and years it was a magazine first mm -hmm. and so you know that's the kind of stuff that they're going to do so to get offended is kind of weird but it, it is it happens but that's that's my point so they're even going to be able to get away with it a little bit more than if i just did that right that's what i was getting at you can't do that as a as a civilian <laughs> no you're oh you're going down fast yeah so i that's the one of the things that i see is that 
people use the internet not just only to advertise themselves, mm -hmm. but also it seems like they crusade. All the time. Good. Th that's in the book, too, talking about how to leverage social media for your cause. Well, it's one of the things where they crusade for your cause, mm -hmm. which is good. And then it's just, it seems like there's just a lot of etiquette Nazis out there or, yes. or the morality police. Right. Or this is a great way for me to scold human beings online. An attack. And I think like a full scale attack sometimes. And I've also like, and this is one of the questions I wanted to ask you because I have I'm running into this issue and I want to know how many Twitter followers does it take before major corporations will bend to your will? <laughs> because I see I follow a lot of people <laughs> and some of them are obscure, but they have a right. lot of followers. Right. I mean, it's, if I if I said a name, you wouldn't know who they were. But they and they're like American Airlines is awful, blah blah blah, and they get instant taken care of. And yeah. guys like me, I only have 600 followers. As soon as I tweet something. Nothing happens. I'm just screaming into the wind. I mean, and, and, okay, and I'll be honest, I'm one of those people that I'll, I'll use Twitter sometimes when I'm having a hard time, and um, it could be helpful. I think there's no magic number, but I would say the number where I think most people stop and say, oh, wait a minute, it's probably somewhere around 10,000. I think that's probably the magic number where once you hit 10,000, people are like, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me pay attention to what this person's saying um, because they have a large following and you know, if, if their target market happens to be made up of our customers or potential customers, this could get ugly. Let's make them happy. Well, so that leads to the question, if you are a person who you're online, mm -hmm. you're on Facebook or something, and something does happen and you you get a bad Yelp review mm -hmm. or you someone is criticizing you online, not just you, but your company. Right. How do you handle that? Well, first thing you want to do is you always want to address it quickly. Okay. In most cases, you want to come, you want to address it quickly. Um, you want to address it in a way where it's calm, collected. You are not being defensive. You always need to come across as a problem solver. And so sometimes we're going to deal with crazy people, Craig. Sometimes there's nothing we can do I, to make them basis, not crazy, I... right? And so you can offer a solution, say, you know, I'm so sorry this happened. Or, you know, I want to understand this a little bit more. Can you give me a call, Ed, or send me an email? If they try to continue the conversation online after you've offered an offline solution, you can stop there. Because at that point, anyone observing the interaction sees that you're making a genuine effort. This person is gone to crazyville. But you need to do enough so that people can see that you're serious about your brand. And at what point are we finally going to stop call these people out when they say, oh, I was hacked? Because that seems to be the, the easiest excuse now <laughs> is you get into a Twitter war or a <clears throat> Facebook war or whatever. Mm -hmm. You look like a fool because right. you're a raving idiot. Right. And then you go, oh, I was hacked. That wasn't me. Yeah, normally I don't believe that unless there's like terrible misspellings and it looks like someone from around another part of the globe actually started posting. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't tend to cut people a lot of slack when they say they're hacked unless it's pretty obvious. Right. It can happen. Oh, no, it definitely can. Um, but we, we also need to be careful about our security. We need to make sure that we're using different passwords for all of our accounts. We need to make sure that we're not just on social media and all these public places where people can, you know, watch us and see what we're doing and, you know, hack in there. So we just have to be smart. So it's really, uh, again, you pretend that you are in front of a large crowd. I think you call it grandma, yeah, Grammy Jumbotron. Jumbotron <laughs> Granny that, Jumbotron, yeah. Yeah, you behave like you're in front of your grandmother, which uh -huh. you don't know my grandmother. Oh. But, um, <laughs> or the Jumbotron, because like, I, I think there are people in the world that when they do make an entrance, mm -hmm. they are obnoxious. And, and, right. And they're, I mean, like I said, I know a lot of people who, they're huge personalities and egos, so when they come in the door, first they wedge their ego through. Right. <laughs> and then a couple seconds later, they they arrive. Right. Um, so you've got to manage how that is. Is it? I know some people hire people. Right. To manage their accounts. Right. Some people do it themselves. Is there a preferred method or is it a taboo to hire someone to be it's, you? It's not taboo, but it's normally, really it's best for you to be you because social media is about social interactions. People want to get to know you, especially like networks like Facebook. It's all about building community. So it makes people feel a little cheated if they're building a relationship with someone that they find out later isn't you. I mean, imagine if you had a twin and you started sending your twin in to places instead of you, and then all of a sudden one day you're like, oh, nope, that was my twin. I'm, I'm really staying at home all the time. People will feel cheated and they will not like you. You know, I, we just had this conversation with a speaker friend of mine who had uh, got a reply from a tweet that they had sent and said, mm -hmm. they said, oh, you were great at this, blah, blah, and someone replied saying, oh, thank you. And then when they met that person in real life, mm -hmm. they said, thank you for replying to my tweet. I was very nice to you. I was really, really made my day. And, and she's like, oh, that was not me. That was my assistant. Right, right. And just crushed. Right. So, I mean, here's the thing. You know, if there's some things that you may need a little bit of help with. 
So let's say if you want to make sure that you're checking all your inboxes on a regular basis. So if you if you get to the level where you just have such a large following, it's okay to use a little bit of help. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're using your voice. And also if you're corporate, I mean, if you are, I mean, you're Crystal Washington, mm -hmm. but if you were going to be, you know, McDonald's, mm -hmm. then you can hire social right. media people. But, but here's something that I love. You see this more in the telecommunications industry. You can still leverage people as a brand. Because at the end of the day, really, people still want to feel like they're connecting with people online. If they have an issue with your brand and they say something about, um, let's say T-Mobile, okay? Say they're having an issue with T-Mobile and, and I don't have any issues with T-Mobile. I, I love think you them. have an issue with T-Mobile. No, I love them. I've been with them for years. But anywho, so they post something about it. T-Mobile... They're not a sponsor, so you can, no, you not can, at all. You can rail against as, them. As an example... Um, when they respond back to people at the end, um, you know, they'll respond, but it'll have a person's name attached to it. Or they've even created some profiles, which is like the, the service rep's name. So let's say Crystal T-Mobile. So they're responding to you. So there's ways that you can still have that person-to-person -person presence because social media and Internet, they don't get rid of that need for us to interact with people. So how do we start getting a, a plan in place? Mm -hmm. Because there's got to be some process. Because... <clears throat> First off, it can be a huge time suck. It can. If you're if you're not strategic, definitely. Well, even if you are strategic, sometimes you can, you know, there's some things that you that can draw your attention away. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're sitting there doing your job. Uh -huh. You're you're tweeting valid valuable tweets to people and somebody shoots up a link in your feed and you start, "Oh, now you're reading this article." And I'm then, a fan of timers. Can I just and that's I even mentioned that in there, setting timers. Okay. Yeah. So, you mean actual Yes. Timer. So Set. explain how you would use your timer. So for instance, I actually do this in the morning. So, you know, when I get up, I gather the stories for the day that I'm going to be sharing and everything. I set my timer for 20 minutes and then I go into my social media accounts and I post what I need to post. Now, are you timing your your posts as well or are you just blah, putting it out there I'm, in that 20 minutes? I'm and then, saying from 810 yeah. to 830. That's the time I have to do social media that morning. Okay. And then I have to go and do whatever else I need to do that's scheduled. And I might come back and, and randomly check things if I need to. No, my point was, all right, you're doing from 8, 10, 8, 30, you're doing your deal. Mm -hmm. But are you scheduling those tweets to from like 9, 9, 30, 10? Oh, sometimes 10, I schedule them. Sometimes I just post them. It really just depends. Because the problem is, is with feeds. Mm-hmm. It's, they call it a stream for a right. reason. You, you know, if something blows past you, you may never Well, and that's more it. so of an issue on Twitter. Like when you're on Facebook, if you have a good following and enough people are clicking on it, paying attention to it, and they start um, starting conversations in there, you're more likely to still pop up pretty decent in the feed. Oh, okay. Twitter, yeah, once it's gone, it's gone. It's, it's a flash. So you yeah. won't need to post things repeatedly there. LinkedIn also starting has the feed thing yes. situation going because I, I, I would just talk to a uh, former guest, mm -hmm. Michael Redman, who has her book coming out. Mm -hmm. And... She was talking about it. She goes, did you see it? And I'm like, I didn't even know it was coming out because she had posted it on, on her status right. on LinkedIn. But that, you know, if I'm not there, it just goes, and, sweeps right past you. And honestly, my opinion is posting status updates on LinkedIn, um, not amazingly helpful no compared way. to other social networks. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing to do, but people don't check LinkedIn the way that they check Facebook or Twitter or even Pinterest on some levels for the ladies that are the 87% of women that are, are on Pinterest right now. Yeah, I, or 80% of the network that's women. Right, and, I, and Pinterest, just the way it's set up, is just difficult for me to follow. Right. I, I mean, I'm, I am a visual learner, but it's just a gaggle of pictures. It is, that, it uh, is. And they're random. It, yes. Sometimes they'll be in clumps. You'll see, like, you'll be scrolling <laughs> down, and then there's 58 desserts. Right. And then you'll get hungry, and you'll walk off and eat, and you come back, and then... Or shoes. I don't get hungry when I see shoes, but oh, okay. yeah. No, sh definitely shoes. Yeah. Um, and my wife, uh, Doctor Who. Okay. It's okay. Just, it just seems like a, it comes in little <laughs> weird clumps. Right. Like there's things. So is that something that you 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 pick your network by how comfortable you are in it, or do you force yourself just to go where your customers are? Well, you want to go where your customers are, but you also want to go where you can shine as well. So, for instance, if you are not naturally a social person, if you're not good at communicating with people please do not get on Facebook because it's it's going to be really bad, especially if you have a tendency to go off on rants. You know, so for a lot of my wonderful friends that are in the accounting uh, departments of wherever they're working, and I'm not saying all accountants are, but I've, I've seen as as a trend, you, you, you might not want to be there. You, you might want to get off Facebook. Or like I said, I only use Facebook for personal stuff. So if mm -hmm. I do rant, it's it's my friends. And if they don't like it, they're going to, when I see the person, <laughs> I'll say the same stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, because I have to have a little, you have to have little oasis of protection because you want to participate right. just like everybody else is. Like Facebook is very, often very political or right. very social oriented. So a social cause oriented. So if someone's posting something about some kind of gun law. Right. On my Twitter feed, 
I'll be quiet. Right. Because that's, but right, Facebook, you're using I want to say something, especially when they say something horribly stupid. I got it. I so. got it. Well, and, and it doesn't mean you can't have any political conversations because, I mean, if we're Facebook friends, we're connected, right? So while I talk a lot about technology, I let people get a little window of who I am. You know, I'll, I'll go off on little tangents here and there. So you can have that and have critical discussions, but it all needs to be a part of your brand. And before you post something, you just need to ask yourself, is this adding to what I'm trying to accomplish? Is this going to help me accomplish my goals? If you're using it for for business, that is. If it's for personal, whatever. So uh, the metrics involved, how can we, because that's the biggest problem is that no one knows mm -hmm. it's working. Mm -hmm. they, they tell me they can't prove it's working. Right. So how can we start understanding it's, it can't just be pure followers because a lot of the times, like Justin Bieber, they mm -hmm. said like half or half of his millions of followers were bots. Right. So that's not a, a true representation. Is clout anything of any... I mean, clout can help you get started. It can kind of help you see what your following is. It, it, I love the fact that you're asking this question. I was actually just doing a presentation for some VPs of marketing for Fortune 500 companies like last week. And this conversation came up. And what's happening is even a lot of agencies that are hired to do this stuff, they measure their success in terms of the growth of the social media. So for them to, at the end of the case study, they're saying, well, you started off with 10,000 likes on your Facebook page, and now you have 30,000. So yay, we win. And, and the way I explained it to them was it is insane to measure your success by the growth of social media alone. I mean, it tells yeah. you if you're getting if people are interested. But at the end of the day, here's what matters. Um, how many click throughs are you getting to your website? How many calls are you getting about opportunities? How many headhunters or recruiters are contacting you? How many um, leads have you received in the last week? It needs to be measured according to what you're trying to accomplish, not in terms of I have more likes or followers. So before I let you go. And I, I really appreciate all the time. You, you First off, let, tell them that this week you've got a book signing. Where is that going to be? Oh, the book signing is going to be at the Microsoft Store inside of the Galleria in Houston, Texas. It's on June 9th. On June 9th from 3 to 5 p.m. All right. And so is it a pre-register? Do you just show up? My book signings, they I did them in Barnes & Nobles, and what they would do is they would – uh, just put me near a stack of my own books. Oh, that's nice. No, this is a little bit different. Yours is like, so I know that. Right, is, that's right. why. So actually, um, you can go to socialmediaY.com. W-H-Y or social media w -H -Y. Y. Thank yeah. you so much, W-H-Y. Go to uh, socialmediaY.com, and then you can get information on how to uh, attend the book signing and go ahead and pre-register. Okay, because like I said, it's totally different. I knew it was a different format than mine, because mine yeah. was basically, I was like, at, when you go to Sam's Club right. or the grocery store. I'm the guy cutting up meat and sh trying to sh jam it down your, your face. Right. That was me with my book. Yeah, m the Microsoft Store is a little different in their rules and how they set things up. But um, we're excited. We're actually the first book signing that they've done in there. And so. it makes perfect sense. That's ex very exciting. Yeah. And and one of the little things that you talk about in the book that I have stopped doing, mm -hmm. and I need to probably do some more just for my own benefit, is blogging. Because mm -hmm. blogging's been around for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I I'm starting to wonder how effective it is only in the in the sense that it's so much content right. that it's hard to filter through it. Mm -hmm. Like if I go to someone's blog and I see, you know, if they blog every day for a year, right? let's be honest, not every single one of those blog posts is a winner. Right. You just, if he, and if he is, this person needs to start writing books and making lots of money <laughs> and do something else because he's obviously uh, fantastic. Right. So how can we get <clears throat> it so it's not just clutter in context, I think most people just do it for search engine optimization. Well, and that's one really good reason to do it. Honestly, um, so there are some people when they're doing it just to be found by um, potential clients where it really is, it doesn't matter if anyone's reading it. And, and honestly, I, I think that's a viable strategy. Of course, you want your things to be decent. You don't want to just post garbage. But not everyone is looking to build a huge following. Now, if you're trying to build a huge following for something, maybe you're in the media, maybe you're doing something where you author whatever – then you can actually go ahead and just start creating shorter posts. Because really what it is is it gives people the opportunity to stay connected with you in between other events, other things you have going on, and it gives them little pieces of information or little pieces of something to kind of stay connected with you. Now, is the strategy for blog posting similar to podcasting where if you do a podcast, consistency is the key. So yes. every Tuesday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, we drop a podcast, and that's that's the way it goes. And now there may be days off because mm -hmm. or on vacation, but it's it's one of those things where it's consistently it's like a television show or right. a radio show. People know when it's going to be. With blog postings, do you have to have one? You have to go. Well, I want to do 
two or three a week. I have to do two or three a week every week. See, most experts would say yes. I'm going to say no. And the reason why is now for most people, it is helpful to be consistent with anything that you do with social media because it it builds discipline with you first off and then your audience is used to it. But some of the biggest, most successful bloggers blog randomly. You know, like I I know Scott Stratton, he's he's hilarious. I remember um, at one point he said, you know, the only time you blog is when you have something really important to share. And so he might have two in a week. He might have four months where he doesn't post anything, but he has a huge following. Also, some of the other um, blogs out there that are, are a little bit more humor related or things, you'll see some of those where it's just random. So it really depends on your audience. You have to know what they're expecting. Another reason you might blog as well is it may not be to get readers. It may not be for SEO. But if you're looking for employment, if you're blogging about things going on in your industry, it just kind of builds you as an expert. So as you're looking for those jobs and you put a connection back to your blog, it makes you look that much more serious than your peers if it's a solid blog. Now, if it's garbage, you probably just lost yourself a job. Well, that's the thing is that sometimes you open yourself up not just to – you have that one great thing, but you're opening yourself up to criticism. It's like right. reality television. Right, exactly. People have this one great thing they do, and they think, well, let's have them follow me around all day. Well, Bad. You're, you're only good at what you do for 15 <laughs> minutes when you know that people are watching you. But right. when you relax and become who you really are, ugh, sometimes that can be a disaster. Exactly, so exactly. So do you have people t- critique it? Do you – so you say, I'm going to put this here – before you have a blog post, it's like you have someone take a look at it. Not just not just for proofreading and editing. Right. I'm talking about is it worthy of posting it on a LinkedIn group or something Well, it like depends. That? I mean, you can have a little test group. You can have a couple friends if you want to. Um, it really depends on how serious you're trying to take it. I think most people, especially from a professional standpoint, they have a pretty good gauge on if this is decent. You send it to your editor or whoever you have just to kind of quick proofread it. Somebody that you trust, maybe even someone else in the industry that doesn't have a blog, get and, and pay them to do it. Have them take a look at it and that's fine. It, we, we shouldn't get so caught up that we're trying to do things so perfect that we're not taking action. But at the same time, we shouldn't just throw anything out because you can't undo what you do on social media. I don't care what you delete. It still exists. Yeah. And how can we – I mean it's, it's just, it just seems like it's so difficult to, to know which platform to be on because they keep telling you you need to be on this one, you need to be on that one. And then new ones pop up all the time. Who is they? Just – Regular folks that the regular folks are being told by whoever. Okay. I mean, if I go out there and I just started Googling social media, how do I do social media? Right. And you start getting information from folks. Right. Now, the, most of the time, they're getting information from whoever, just right. random folks. <laughs> right. So they're not getting it from an expert. They're getting it from someone who had great success, but that's because not because of the platform they were on, but because of the product they had or right. because of the service they provided. Or who they're married to. And sometimes or, the strangest things are famous. what propel them to. Yeah. That's the other thing is like you get these famous people going, oh, I started this, I, I wrote this book about uh, being a cook and I was just so shocked that people would pay attention. Well, that's because you you did such a great job because right. you have or, all these other people. Or I just tweeted it and I made all this money in sales. So everyone should tweet their books because that's how you get sales. Not realizing this is a celebrity. This is the reason why people cared enough to click on their tweet. Yeah. Right. And they Or they someone with a million followers right. tells you that this is the way to do it because that's how it works for me. And it's like well, it only works if you have 500,000 followers. Right. At the end of the day, you have to keep in mind, again, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Where are your target market? And is that network that you're looking at, does it have a function that will help you accomplish that goal? If it does not, if whatever it is you're trying to accomplish cannot be accomplished through short messages, don't get on Twitter. So if you keep those three fundamentals in mind, it helps. The next thing is when people pressure you to join something, first thing you want to ask them is, how is that working for you? Because 99% of the time, that's going to cut out what they're talking about. You want it to be strategic. And if they do tell you how it worked for them, then stop to think about what are your similarities, what are your differences, is this something that you can emulate and have similar results? Or is this a celebrity where they already have a heads up that you can't compete with? Or they're not even in your area of expertise. Right. They're, they're the most famous periodontist right. in their industry, but yet they, nobody knows who they are. They, maybe they only have 1,000 followers, but every single one of them is, an, you know, is a major player in the right. periodontal industry. Um, I think people see other people's success and they, and they try to gauge what they're doing. Right. And that's, where I, that's why I was talking about the metrics part. It's just so difficult to figure out by using other people as an example. Right. So again, I mean, again, I think when you mention clout, clout's a good way for you to kind of see what's happening. But at the end of the you day... You can game clout, though. You can. You can. I have. But for the average person, it's a good way to kind of see if they're going in the right direction. Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, what you really need to measure is your analytics on your website, how many phone calls you're getting, how many right. emails you're getting with opportunities, the things that either bring revenue or opportunities. That is what really matters. Yeah, because I was able to uh, raise my cloud score almost 20 points by posting my amateur photographs in the communities. Got it. And then, you know, some of them get 30, 50 likes, right. or, or likes or in reshares, which maybe on Twitter, I'm not going to get that. Right. So all of a sudden, my cloud score went to, you know, 65. Oh, there's, there's a lot of ways to play it. But the average person doesn't know those ways. So you said, I'm saying, again, if they start to employ some tactics and they start to look at clout, they'll see the shift. But you know if you're gaming it. So then you know yeah. that your clout score doesn't matter. Well, we also know there's a lot of gaming going on in a lot of different things. Right, that's true. Um, especially you can go to Fiverr. Yes. Which I can't stand. That to get Twitter followers. Right, or To get right. Facebook likes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the, and that's why measuring that alone isn't helpful and that's why when I was talking to those VPs of marketing hiring these agencies that measure the success in terms of the growth of the social media that that doesn't make that's insane it is insane so at what point do you give up on a certain platform and just and move on to another one well if you've actually developed a basic strategy saying this is what I'm trying to accomplish I'm trying to accomplish these goals and you're not seeing any movement in that direction either you get some professional help or you say, you know what, this is not where I'm getting, I'm getting the best use of my time here. Now, if you're using two social networks and you're seeing that one is working, it's really getting you what you're, what you're trying to accomplish, another one isn't, then go ahead and spend the time on the one that's working. Because I think a lot of people feel like with Google+, Plus, everyone's been talking about Google+, Plus no. for years. But I mean, ever since it came out, they keep on saying, go to Google+, Plus. Google, it's going to be the next hot thing. I um, can't remember the guy's name. He's a very famous speaker who's been pushing Google+. Plus. Guy Kawasaki. That's the guy. Yeah. I was going to say Gary Takahashi, but that's my father-in-law. Oh, you're so funny. He has a book with a plus. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I, I, in my head I knew because, like I said, my father-in-law is Gary Takahashi, and it's very close to Guy. <laughs> uh, and, um, I mean, they've been pushing that forever, and I have, and I go on there, and mm -hmm. I know that it's not useful to my services right. to me. I can just see it. Well, and here's, here's what people need to know about Google+. Plus. First off, Google owns it, and so it can help you with your SEO. So it's good to have a profile set up. Doesn't mean you have to post on it the same way that you do Facebook. For the most part, it's majority men. A lot of them are young in the technology industry. If you're not trying to connect with those people, if you... And who really is? I mean, those the young tech guys, they're just kind of creepy. Single ladies? I don't know. I don't, no, they're not. They're, I don't, I'm no. married. I've been out the game for a while, Craig. I don't... I'm, I'm, yeah, my anniversary is... It's going to be in like four days. So it's going to you know, it's, it's be nine years. I have no idea. So. How awesome is that? So, yeah. So, again, setting up a profile is fine. It doesn't mean you have to be there because if your target market isn't there, if you're sitting there and you have, um, I don't know, let's say you make doilies, right? It doesn't make sense for you to try to connect with people on Google Plus because these techies don't want your doilies. Yeah, so, it's just peer pressure, though. That's, that's, I think it's, it's professional peer pressure it is. that ends up wasting your time and it's really difficult that's why i'm glad that you wrote this book now are you going to be updating this on a regular basis yes that's going to take some updating so Cause, cause, at least a, probably an annual version of it because i was going to say how is it possible to write a book on something that changes so quickly you're going to have to do uh, updates which yes. is very good and is this available as an ebook as well i'm assuming yes it'll be on kindle um and then it'll also be available at the iStore. and so updating that will be very easy yeah great using my my guy that does that yeah or not you. you no you're too busy <laughs> it's the social media why with crystal by crystal washington it is a great book I, I like i said if you if you're just starting out or you don't quite know which platform is for you this mm -hmm. is a great guide because it doesn't just tell you what to do it tells you why and it tells you in 118 pages very that's why it took a year to edit it because literally I had to get rid of half of the book. I wanted to make it as succinct as possible. I, I, I whoever your McCarthy House Press, uh, very nice people because my publisher kept on trying to tell me to beef my my 220 page <laughs> book. Up. So uh, I recommend it highly, and we can find you at crystalwashington.com, and we can probably get links to the book there as well. Yes, Crystal, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs>